Hello! Welcome to this Search Minutes episode, when I'm going to talk about query rules to enhance the search experience in SharePoint Online and also in SharePoint On-Premises. Everything I'm going to show you today can be applied both on-prem in SharePoint 2013 and 2016 and also in SharePoint Online. So let's see how query rules work and what we can do with them, what we can, uh, how we can enhance the search experience by the help of query rules. So I am in my demo environment at the moment and let me do a search for text documents. And you see, I get a little bit customized results and custom refiners as well. And now let me add query rules to this one. So if I'm switching here to my site collection administration, this is the interface where I can add and modify the existing query rules. So just uh, let me show you where I am at the moment. I am in the site settings and both under the site collection settings, I can see search query rules here and also under the search settings, I can see query rules. So if you change the query rules under the search settings, that will be applied only on this current site. And if you modify the query rules or add the new query rule on the site collection setting, it will be applied on the whole site collection, of course. If you are on-prem, you can create farm level uh, query rules as well. If you are in Office 365, you can create tenant level query rules as well. So now let me go for search query rules. And when you go to the query rule management uh, window, first you have to select the result source where you want to apply the query rules. If you are not sure and you ha have not done any customization on search yet, Probably you have to select the local SharePoint results because this is the default one. So if you know that you haven't done anything yet, just select this one and you should be, uh, you should be good. However, for now I'm selecting a different one because I'm uh, going to use that one on my search page. So I have already selected the result source. Now I'm going to create a new query rule. My new query rule it would be search minutes demo. This is just a label. This is just a name of my query rule for uh, my own reference. So there are actually the first part of a query rule is actually a condition. And I would like to run my query rule whenever the query contains the word text. So I add text here with the condition of query matches this keyword exactly. So if a user enters only this word, this query rule will be run. But also I would like to add an additional condition with an OR operation. And in this case, I want to check if the query contains this word text. So in this case, the query rule will be run either the query is the word text itself or the query is longer but somehow contains the word text inside. So this is the first thing to identify and define your conditions. Of course, there are several conditional options here that uh, you can choose. You can uh, check if the query is in a, in a dictionary in the term store. Uh, you, can do, you can do regular expression conditions, etc., etc. So it can be really advanced. For now, I'm just going with two options. And again, they are uh, connected by OR. So either the query contains text or the query has the, has the word text only, this query rule will be run. So now 
let me choose the action, what I want to do by Query Rule. The Query Rule's goal is actually to enhance the search experience with promoted results, with boosted result blocks, and also you can change the query itself. So for, first of all, let me add the promoted result here. So for example, I want to promote my YouTube channel here. And in this case, I'm just entering the title, which will be displayed and also entering the URL. And for now, I'm going to render it uh, as a text uh, by default. Um, and I'm going to add a, uh, another one just to show you how it looks like if it's visual. So I'm going to render the second one as a banner and not as a text. So those are going to be two promoted results. Whenever I or any of the users do a query containing the word text. So I'm going to save it for now. And you see I have my query rule added here. I'm going to refresh this page. And there you go. You can see my YouTube channel is displayed here as a text, the URL of the YouTube channel. And also my website is displayed as a banner. And the visual depends on the source. What is your primary picture? What is your primary image there? But basically you can display it as a banner and you can use it for internal marketing purposes. You can promote anything here. You can promote your own applications, your internal events like a Christmas party or summer holiday or, or a an internal campaign as well when you do an organizational survey that you want the users fill in, etc. etc. So it can be used for a lot of uh, different cases. And since it can be uh, rendered as a banner, it can it it can be very nice and and very user friendly too. Okay, let's move forward and let's say you want to boost some results to the top. And you can see we are seeing several Word files, PDFs, emails, even Excel spreadsheets here. And let's say I want to boost the top two uh, Word files to the very top of uh, the results. So I'm not going to add anything. I'm not going to change what is displayed to the user. I want just to boost up something. You can apply the same if you want to boost if you want to display uh, a specific template from, from a library or a policy document or a procedure or customer information to, to the current user related to this query, uh, uh, of course. So I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to my query rule settings and I'm going to edit this one again. Now we have two promoted results and now I'm going to add a result block here. And for the result block, the first thing I'm going to change is instead of using the subject term in the title of this result block, I want to use the search box, search box query. What's the difference? The search box query contains first the keyword. The keyword in my case is text. This is the keyword that is in my query rules condition. This is the action term. The second part of the query, if it has any, is the subject term. So if I use the text document as a query, in, case, in this case, the word document will be the subject term. But of course, I want to display the results for the whole query and the whole query text document is what is called search box query uh, here. You can see a description of those three parameters here in the query variables uh, section. 
So I'm changing search box query uh, in the title of the result block and also in the query. And also I want to display the word files where the file extension is either doc or docx. So what did I do here? I have changed the result blocks title from subject term to the query search box query parameter because this is what contains the whole query. And also I did the same in the query itself and added one more filter, one more condition, which is the file extension should, should be docx. I want to display two items, that is just fine. And an important step is if you open the settings here and scroll down a little bit, you can see there are several options here. And one option is this block is ranked within the core results. What does it mean? This result block will be displayed, use the default ranking model. So maybe it's not promoted to the top of your results that it's, it, it, it's displayed. It is a block of results, but it is somewhere. You are, cannot be sure where it is in your result set. If you want to promote it to the top of your result set, you have to switch to this radio button, which says this block is always shown above the core results. I'm going to do that. Once again, you can find this under the settings here. So I'm going to change this setting and going to save the query role settings. Now, my query role is supposed to do two things. One is adding promoted results. Second, adding res promoted result block. Let me show you if I'm reloading this page, you can see that my YouTube channel is promoted here. My website as a banner is promoted there. Those are the two promoted results. And now I have a new block results for text document. And I can see two word files being displayed here. That is what I wanted. Once again, those are the two most relevant word files to this query, right? But in many cases, you want to display the two most recent or the one most recent document here. For example, if your users are searching for a policy or a procedure or a template document, in most cases, they are not interested in the templates or policies from three years ago, right? You, they want to see the most recent one. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going back to my query rule settings again, opening my query rule, editing my result block settings. And in those settings, this is where I uh, did all those settings here, most recent. I'm going to change the title of my result block to the most recent results now. And also if I launch the query builder here, you can see that beside uh, displaying the results and besides being able to edit the query itself here and selecting the result source and adding properties and, and doing advanced uh, query uh, editing, I can switch to sorting options as well. And now what I can do here is instead of using the ranking model, I can, I can sort the results by something else. In this case, I'm going to use the last modified time uh, managed property in descending order. In this case, what I am expecting to see on the top is the most recent word document in my result block. Once again, I am just editing the result block settings. So I'm not going to see the results ordered by the last modified time in the whole result set only in my result block this time. The query remains the same. 
I'm going to change my query rule again. And before I'm refreshing the page, just please note that the first result in the result block here is the taxpayer information letter and the second one is tax document one. Now I'm going to refresh the page and there you go. I can see different results in the result block. Why? Because I have changed how they are ordered. So instead of using the default ranking model to order the results, I reorder them by the last modified time. And of course I can see the text document one here and I can see uh, all the other documents, taxpayer information letter is here. Uh, and those are the most recent Word documents to my query. Boom, this is very good. The last thing I would like to show you today is how to create a generic query rule. So for now, my query rule runs whenever I do a query for something that includes the word tax. Of course, you can create a query rule that is empty. So I'm going to, I mean, where the condition is empty. If I'm coming here and removing both conditions, you can see I don't have any query conditions here and the query rule settings page uh, says this rule fires on any query text. That means whatever the users are searching for, they will see those uh, promoted results. If it's an important campaign in your organization, you can do that. In this case, I'm going to remove uh, the YouTube channel. I just want to display the banner uh, if you like. Uh, and also they will have this result block promoted the two most recent Word document to the top for any queries. So I'm going to save my uh, query rule, switching back here, refreshing the page. And just to prove that it really has been updated, you can see my YouTube channel is not promoted here anymore, only my uh, website. So I'm going to change the query uh, here, which uh, contains the word letter, this case. And there you go. I can see the taxpayer information letter, taxpayer letter Dublin. I'm going to search for audit now. You can see I have two promoted Word documents, Hello Dublin and Taxpayer Information Letter here and everything there is below that. This is what I wanted to share you about query rules. Of course, the opportunities are endless. You can do a lot of different things, much more advanced things about query rules. I just wanted to show you what's possible and what you can start thinking about it because it's a really good way to enhance the search experience either by using query conditions in the query rule or firing a query rule for every query in your organization. You can do great things. You can filter out some content. You can promote some content. You can de demote some content. You can uh, display banners for campaigns or events or promotions in your organization. Actually, the, the possibilities are endless. What are you using query rules for? If you have any good idea, please don't hesitate to share in the comment. I would really love to see some nice use cases, what you do with query rules. And who knows, we can learn from each other as well. Thank you very much and see you next week.